All right, welcome back. We'll get right back into this uh, where we left off with the IC socket there. We're not actually going to mount the IC yet, but there it is right there. Um, let's see, what do we have next? Uh, apparently it wants us to do the push buttons next. I think I'm actually going to not do those, and we're going to go ahead and do the uh, oscillator crystal here. We've got a 10 megahertz crystal. Um, I'm assuming that that is probably not being so much used as a, uh, a timer for the, the, the CPU. Although that's probably not quite advanced enough to be considered a CPU, but I'll bet it's actually being used to set the frequencies for the uh, composite video out. But I wouldn't quote me on that. That makes that's what makes sense to me. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this. And it's very interesting. It's got a well, we'll see in a moment here. I'm going to solder one lead. This is an exceedingly temperature sensitive component, so we want to be very careful with it. And expose it to as little heat as possible. There we go. Get it nice and lined up for the next stage, which is a little odd. Alright, so then we'll Flow the solder onto the other pin. Alright, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to take this little hunk of bare wire and pull it off of the there, tape. There we go. And then we're going to Bend it over, and then put it through these holes here. I'm not entirely too sure why they're having me do this. Um, I my assumption is that it's probably more structural than anything, but there may be some sort of electrical reasoning behind this. Um, those pads are continuous to the ground plane, so maybe it's important. Although if it was electrically significant, I would have expected them to have given me some sort of conductive adhesive or something along those lines to help. Oh, that's really warm. Uh, conduct, but eh, I suppose that looks good enough. Anyway, so we'll just sort of staple that on with that jumper wire. I'm going to crop the leads because they get messy. Alright, next step, because we skipped the push buttons, we'll do those later. I don't want them getting in the way of the other components that we'll be working with here. Alright, so we'll throw the trimmer on now. This is just a standard little potentiometer with a value of 1k ohm. So that means it goes from 0 to 1k, and it goes right there. Some big pads for that uh, potentiometer. We'll flow that solder on. Make sure it's nice and flush, which it is. Nice. And flow the remaining joints. Like so. There we go. Really like this, uh, just putting components together and watching the, the circuit board come together and uh, just the progress and stuff throughout the whole process. Alrighty, so now we'll go from for C1 and C2, which are these 18 picofarad capacitors here, which uh, they'll just have a 1.8 on them. Uh, any value on ceramic or tantalum capacitors is notated in picofarads. 
So if it just says 1 8, that means it's 18 picofarads. And those go into the positions of C1 and C2, which are here on either side of the crystal, which actually makes sense. Um, on, get, get in there. There we go. All right. So I'm pretty sure I'll need to reposition these once I've soldered them because they're so short. Probably should have done them before the crystal. There we go. Uh, I suppose it's not too bad. Right. And then just solder the other leg. Just going onto the ground plane. Thankfully, uh, oops, I just bumped the gooseneck that the camera is on. Hopefully it didn't jostle too much. Thankfully, capacitors are not entirely humongously temperature sensitive. I mean, technically any electrical component is temperature sensitive to some degree, as it were. Uh, that was a totally unintentional pun. Um, but there are some that are really sensitive and others that are not. Alrighty, so then our other capacitor is this 100 nanofarad capacitor. Um, wow, that is really taped in there, isn't it? Uh, this might take some working to get off. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, so this one, the notation on it, which is nearly invisible, says 104. So that's going to be a 1, a 0, and then four additional zeros. So uh, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So we've got uh, 100,000 picofarads, or 100 nanofarads. Yeah, so I've got a really weird way of, of figuring out the zeros there. It makes sense to me. Um, so that's going to be in C3, which is right here above the processor, which I'll wager... It looks like it's some sort of decoupling capacitor for the power supply of the actual chip. All right. So blow some solder on there. I know that's probably going to need a slight adjustment in position. There we go. I believe this is a tantalum capacitor. Um, very expensive capacitors, those. Uh, tantalum is also incredibly toxic. Um, but they are able to cram a very large amount of storage capacity into, well, large, uh, proportionately, into a very small package. Um, and they are non-polarized. Uh, your only other option for larger uh, capacity is electrolytic capacitors, but they are polarized. And we're actually going to start doing some electrolytic capacitors now. Now that is unique. I've never seen a capacitor done up like that before. Huh. Um, so there are non-polar uh, electrolytics. Um, they are proportionately more expensive and much bulkier because they basically have to contain two capacitors inside them in order to be non-polar. Uh, I might do a, a little video on those at some point. I actually have to learn how they work first before I do a video on them. Alrighty, so these electrolytics are going to go for C3 to C6. Yeah, I've, I've never seen a capacitor done like that before. That's not going to be particularly useful for this application. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and crop these off so that those crimps don't actually interfere. I have to make sure I do this correctly. We're cutting the negative lead a bit shorter than the positive lead, just so I remember which is which. And negative lead a little bit shorter, positive lead a little bit longer. There we go. All right. 
Imagine that would have been super convenient for other projects, but uh, those crimps were not in the right position for this project. Alrighty. So we'll just drop this in here. Bend it over. I'm going to do these individually because they're going to be a pain to do all at once. Of course I would choose to slaughter the ground plane one first. Uh, there we go. That's nice and flush. Finish that off. Probably going to wrap it up after the capacitors here. This way. There we go. And we'll not use the ground plane as the initial soldering point this time. There's that. those. Last but not least, the final capacitor. Uh, there's the negative lead. Where do you belong? You belong up here. So I'll just... Unfortunately, I don't think Velman actually makes this kit anymore. Uh, I found it at a, an interesting little store. Well, it was found for me at an interesting little store out here in Canada called Princess Auto. They've got a a surplus section where they have the most random assortment of stuff you've ever seen and this kit was part of that there we go and we'll just clip the leads off there and we're starting to reach the end of a 15 minute segment here so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there made some good progress. We got the crystal on there, uh, the trimmer, the capacitors, and we'll continue moving on next time. Actually, you know what? Ignore me. I'm going to throw this LED on. Then we'll wrap up the video. All right, so the LED, uh, you got the bar here, which denotes the negative lead, and the long lead is the positive lead, so we'll just drop that right in there. LEDs are temperature sensitive components. Pardon me. There we go. Let's get that nice and flush. And then solder the ground plane on. And there we go. Alright, that used up a couple more seconds there. All right, now we'll wrap up the video. Anyway, as usual, if you liked the, uh, the video, give me a like. The button's over here somewhere. Um, ask any questions in the comments. Uh, give me a subscribe here if you haven't already. It's going to help the channel out because they aren't going to let me monetize anymore after February 20th unless I get uh, a thousand subscribers. And I'll put a video that YouTube thinks you like there. And I'll put my kit building video uh, playlist right there. So, yeah, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next segment.